Gina, welcome to Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What can I answer for you today? Okay. So I'm at the point where um, I need to like start getting my story together because I do want to apply and I've been holding off on applying to, this is my second cycle. Okay. And I have not click submitted like the first time around I opened the application and like I didn't feel ready. Okay. And then this application I actually started like three drafts of personal statements, went over um my EC, wrote them down. I went over my C V with actually medical students to actually okay. see what I'm missing. But I'm still not quite ready. And I don't know how to um kind of Go about my story. So that's where I'm at. When you say you're not ready, what does that mean? Are you saying you're not ready because you don't have any confidence in your application? Or are you saying you're not ready because you're missing part of your application, whether it's classes or an MCAT score or something else? I think it's because I'm missing stuff. And I don't know because I did apply for my master's program. And I got denied to all of them. Okay. And what what kind of master's program? So there were biomedical science MS programs, and then the other one was human humanities, which is from University of Rochester, and then the other program was drug so pathway into medical school. Okay. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah. One. yeah. So so more um, masters to to boost your GPA. That's that's why you were doing the masters. Yes. What's your undergrad GPA? 3.03. Okay. That's cumulative? Yes. What, science, what's your science? 3.0. Okay. So you're right on the cusp of uh, yes. needing to improve that. Um, why do you think you were denied from the master's programs? So I spoke to them and they told me it was my GPA 1. Mm-hmm. And then there, I was getting different things. I was getting that I should do a post back. I shouldn't look into a post back. Um, this program is not a fit for you. And I'm like, okay. And then I <laughs> applied to the, um, it was New York. Med- oh, I also applied to New York Medical College. Mm-hmm. They have an SMP. Science program. There yeah. was a traditional pathway. So I okay. did that one the two years. And I actually spoke to the, the dean of the actual program. And he told me, yes, this is a great fit for you. And then, I applied and I didn't get an acceptance letter. And then he called me and then he was like, I saw your application. You have positive attributions. Like you're a great, you're a great person. It's just your grades. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, but I did have like, um, a peak, like, uh, increased peak. Upward trend. So yeah, upward trend. Okay. And how, how long was your upward trend? Okay, so I've gone to my lowest, which was a 2.5. Okay. And that was a semester was, or for a year? That was probably a semester. Because after okay. I saw that, I automatically like started taking summer classes. I retook classes. Okay. And I did all of that. Okay. And then I ended up, my last semester GPA was a 3.2. Okay. So still not outstanding, right? If you were like, my last semester GPA was a 4.0, then I'd go, oh, that's amazing, right? Um, So still not great. So let me ask you, why do you think you're struggling with your grades? Um, So one thing is that Spanish was my first language. Okay. And it was hard for me to study. I kind of understand the concepts because high school, it wasn't really much of a science space. I didn't really have that foundation okay so how long I have you been in the states college, i was born here but like you're born here but spanish immigrants. is spoken at home okay yeah my yeah parents are immigrants, so they didn't really speak english okay do you still so, live at home yes do your parents still speak spanish in the house yes okay so in those situations it's really weird because i'm like stop speaking Spanish in the house, right? For, for I've, I've had this conversation so much with students and it's, it, it feels like culturally wrong for me to say that, right? I, I, under, I understand that as the white man sitting here. Um, but, 
But I truly believe for you to maximize your uh, your abilities in the classroom and especially on the MCAT, the more that you can speak English more than Spanish, the better you will be. And so it's it's one of those things where it's like, can you potentially do that to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, grandparents, wh- whoever's living in the home with you, um, can we can we have an English night only, right? <laughs> and I'll mm-hmm. I'll help you with your English. I'm gonna help me with my English, whatever it is, to potentially help you with your your study skills. Because if you're potentially attributing your your struggles, your GPA struggles, uh, with potentially being a, a second language student, then to fix that, speak more English, right? Um, mm-hmm. But the the bigger issue for me potentially is is not that English is your second language. There's potentially something else because I know plenty of ESL students who who do fine in their mm-hmm. classes. They struggle on the MCAT where that usually shows their head. Talk to me about your schedule when when you're taking classes, right? Your your three point two your last semester your mm-hmm. last year. How many credits was that? 18. So full load, right, of classes. Mm -hmm. Were you working? No. Well, I had a work study, but it was just with my breaks. But it wasn't like, it was just 10 hours a week. Okay. Not really like much. What what else was filling your time? That was about it. Just class. Gym, some, just class, work. Yeah. Doing work. Okay. Okay. It was just work. <laughs> yeah. So so that's a bigger concern for me that you're still only at a 3.2 fully dedicated to school. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the question is, are you utilizing all of the services available to you? And I, I've done a YouTube video. I don't know when this Ask Dr. Gray video is going to come out, but I, I've done a YouTube video that's either out there or coming out soon that talks about kind of resources for for studying. So are you utilizing resources? Are you going to your office hours, the professor's office hours? Are you going to your academic advising center and talking to the advisors there and looking at Mm -hmm. tutoring options, whether free or paid? Are you forming study groups with other classmates? Are you going on YouTube and utilizing all of the free resources on YouTube and, and videos on YouTube? How how are you studying and how have you, as you've gone through this process and, and have continued to struggle, how have you changed what you've done or have you at all? I have. Okay. I have gone to my professors. I have gone to tutoring sessions. Okay. Um, I do go to my advisor. Just that over the years, like it's my school lacked a lot of that, like pre-med support. And yeah, it's, that's not it an excuse. Was, yeah. you, you don't need pre-med support to do well in chemistry. So that's true. Yes. Right. And yeah. And then I would go to my professors all the time. Like I remember I did fail orgo once and okay. then I retook it and I got an A. Great. Like, exactly. So I'm like, I know I can do it, but I don't know what, like what I'm getting at is that if I should look into a post back like in another school because I did look up like my university and like I've taken all the classes mm-hmm. which was the highest is cell bio and genetic yeah and I've taken them yeah so you've you've kind of taken everything that you can take at your current school so so for me a post back is something that you'll probably need to do uh, whether that's a do-it-yourself post back uh, at a community college or another four-year university that has options for other classes uh, I, I think that's what you need to do, and I'd probably recommend that mm-hmm. over a master's. So I'm almost happy that you didn't get into any of the master's programs because I, I think doing an undergrad post back, right, a post back that the classes are undergrad classes, they're going to count towards your undergrad GPA on your application. I think I think that will benefit you more than doing a master's. And that's just mm-hmm. talking to schools and talking to students who aren't getting in because they have low undergrad GPAs but strong master's GPAs. It just seems like schools are valuing more and more the undergrad GPA uh, even if you have a strong master's GPA. So um, 
I I would look at um, a post back, and it doesn't have to be a formal post back. It doesn't have to be something where you're you're spending thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars for a year or two at a formal uh, post back place. Um, if you think you need that level of advisement, which those programs usually offer you, where that's dedicated pre med advisors for post back students. Um, if you think you need that, then I would potentially mm -hmm. look into that. But you could easily just go to your local community college um, and and take the classes that you need, um, potentially repeating some classes. At, at some point, you're going to run out of more and more kind of upper division classes, and you're going to start yes. either repeating classes that you've already taken. Maybe you've gotten C's in or D's in. You already retook that one F, which is great. Um but but taking more classes is going to be important. And so if you just go onto the AAMC website, they have a post -back database. Uh, hopefully medicalschoolhq.net will have one soon as well um, with reviews on post -backs. But if you go to the AAMC database now uh, and filter by an academic enhancer program, which is what you need. Okay. Have you looked into doing a post -back? Yes, I okay. have. Two. There's one in Columbia, and then there's one in Hofstra. Okay. Um, I'm still waiting back from Hofstra, but I did go to their open house, and I spoke to an advisor okay. to like go over like my situation and like what classes can they offer me. Yep. In terms of to boost my GPA and that pre med support. Yeah. And Have you looked good, into I'm doing a do it yourself post back? Well, the one in Hofstra is kind of do it yourself okay. post back because it's it's a year, but people um they said like you can do it like your own schedule. So you can do it your own schedule, but is it is it like you're accepted to our post back program? Pay us thirty thousand dollars. Yes, probably. Yeah, that's probably so. Do it yourself one is where you just you go to to Hofstra as as an undergrad student. And register to take classes without signing up for a the post back program, and they may or may not let okay. you take classes in that way as a non degree seeking student, and so you may have to register for a second degree, and then just take the classes you need, and then just drop out like like half of college <laughs> students do anyway, uh, and just get the classes okay. you need, um, and so you could you could potentially do that uh, as well. Okay. Yeah, and I was also looking into um, Hunter College. Yep. Yep. Hunter has a good uh, post back program. Mhm. Mm but that was it. Like that was like my concern. Like I didn't know what to do. Like I want to apply so bad. And yeah, you want to, to apply, apply, but I I don't think you're ready to apply just yeah, based no. based on grades, right? You want to apply with the best possible application. Um, and GPA wise, right, you're above the cutoffs that I would say is reasonable, but your your GPA is just it's like, uh, it's like I I'd want you to be a little bit higher if possible, showing at least a a semester or two, right? If you could do like twenty or thirty hours over the next year and get as close to a 4.0 as possible, then I would say, great, go ahead and apply, obviously with a strong MCAT, with shadowing and clinical experience and all of that other stuff as well that you need on your application to prove to yourself that this is what you want to do. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think you need a two-year post back. I think you could probably do a year of classes and, and potentially be ready to apply next year. Next year. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to in doing next year and okay. applying. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my biggest concern for you is you going and registering for a post back or a do it yourself post back or getting accepted into a, a, a traditional post back and going in with the same study skills with the same kind of level of of attention and, and process that you have now and you get a three point two in your post back as well. Right? That that will hurt you a lot. And so I just want to make sure that you are doing as much as possible right now to prepare yourself for getting A's as soon as you step foot in the post-bac program or extra post-bac classes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Definitely. Like, it's, I feel like, you know, when you graduate, you come in, you graduate, you 
get the feel of like what's working or whatever and then you're like all right I'm ready to start going back to school and I feel like it's just a different like kind of mindset so I do have that mindset I'm like no like when I go back I just just gonna be books yeah okay any other questions anything else I can help you with um no that's about it I appreciate it so much all right well I appreciate you thanks for calling and and thanks for uh, letting me help you on this journey thank you have a good day